Now we're ready to add these together and get the overall equation. That was our goal all along, right? To get the overall equation. The half reactions were just a trick. So let's write down what all of our starting materials will be now. What's one of the starting materials we'll get when we add these together? The whole thing? Yeah, what's one of the starting materials we have, we'll have for the overall reaction? Right, and now we have to go back and put in the phases again. So it would be aqueous because we were given that originally. And when you're ready, what's one of the other starting materials we'll have? Five Good. But why don't we stick with this first of all and be systematic? So the next thing I'll write down is the eight H pluses and what phase would those be in? Um, what phase should we put for these? Phase? Pardon? Phase. Yeah, aqueous, because these are dissolved in the solution. Pretty much any ion is going to be dissolved in the solution. Any ion is going to be dissolved in the solution. Now, one thing I'm not going to bother writing down are the five electrons. And the reason is those are going to cancel the five electrons on the right. You could write them down, but then you'd want to cancel them. So I just cancel them here. Electrons only appear in half reactions. They don't appear in the overall reaction because they cancel from both sides. Uh, so now we've put down all the starting materials from this equation. And now I need to write down the starting materials from this equation. Well, what should I write down here? 5 fe 2 plus. And it's phase. Right. And that's it. Now we're ready to start writing down um, our products. And again, I would go back up to the first equation and start writing down the products. So what would be our first product? Manganese. And its phase would be? Good. And then? How many? Yeah. We have to use these coefficients because that's what all of our work has been for, to get the right coefficients. What phase should that be in? What does no, it no, uh, it's a, it's a, not aqueous, it's a, it's a, it's a different, we can't do that for a water. Um, what does AQ mean? What does aqueous it mean? It means that we dissolved in the water. And yeah, just aqueous means dissolved in water. Well, it wouldn't make sense to say that the water is dissolved yeah, in the water. It's water. I mean, so the phase here is just L well for liquid. Yeah. We're using liquid water. A lot of people use AQ with ever, without ever learning what AQ precisely means. AQ means dissolved in water. Of course, it means aqueous, which means water. But of course, this is not turning into water. It's dissolved in the water. So this really means something that's dissolved in water. So it's not logical to say the water is dissolved in the water. We just say that it's liquid. Of course, there's far more than just four moles of water here, but only four moles of water are participating in the reaction. The rest is just the solvent. So we're going to be adding, so there's going to be a little bit more solvent when the reaction is over than when we started here. Uh, all right, and now what else should we add? 5 Fe3 plus. Good. I think that's it, because the electrons canceled. All right, now we need to check to see whether there's any things we can cancel from both sides. For example, if we had an H plus on the left and on the right, we could cancel some of them but we don't. Or if we had waters on the left and on the right, we could cancel some of them, but we don't. So this is pretty much done. We're done with this equation. We should now check to make sure everything balance. What do you have to check to make sure everything balance? You have to make sure that all the elements balance and that the charges balance. For example, do the manganeses balance? Yeah, we have one manganese here and one manganese here. So you should check that the oxygens balance. Four oxygens here, four oxygens here. You should check that the hydrogens and the irons balance. And then you should still check that the charges balance. This is negative 1 plus 8 is positive 7. Plus 10 is positive 17. And uh, what's the charge on the right-hand side? Plus 2 plus 5 times 3 is also positive 17. So the charges do balance. Now, if we've done everything correctly, then technically we don't need to check because these are automatically going to balance, but it's easy to make a mistake. So as a double check, you should now check to make sure that everything's balancing, all the elements and all the charges. So these have all balanced here. And we've got our. So oops. we don't need really write downs and water in the pages yet? Or oh, you absolutely need to include yeah. these, yes. Because oh, okay. otherwise it wouldn't balance. Yeah, then we right? have what we had before. Oh, you okay. would just have what you started with. <laughs> and this didn't balance, right? For example, without the waters, the oxygens wouldn't balance. All right, so um, in fact, that was the whole purpose of this whole technique to figure out how many waters and how many H pluses we needed, or that was one of the main purposes of this technique. Now, um, so let's t see uh, what your textbook. So it's about that. 
uh, multiply each half reaction if necessary by an integer so the number of electrons balances, add the half reactions together, canceling substances that appear on both sides. In this case, there weren't any of those, and include states of matter. If you don't include the states of matter, it's incorrect. That actually can make a big difference. As you might have seen um, from the video series, in electrochemistry, your phase makes a big difference. For example, I might have used like the zinc copper cell in that example. Yeah. Well, in that cell, remember that you had zinc 2 plus aqueous, which was interchanging with solid zinc solid. Well, if you don't include the phases, it, it seems like there's no difference. You just have zinc going to zinc. Mm -hmm. So you really need the phases to see that there's actually a reaction happening here. Yeah. So don't skip adding the phases. In other words, they call that the states of matter. And then double check that the atoms and the charges balance. So here's the, the setup. Um, these are the steps that people are most likely to get confused about. So I put these up here on the board, balancing the half reactions. So what's, like, what's the big picture with this? Like when would you ever be given an equation that wasn't balanced and then have to figure out how to balance it like if you were actually a chemist? Well, when does this like really come into play? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> well, suppose that you're trying to make a galvanic cell um, <laughs> using these species. That's what you do. Pardon? <laughs> she was so you make batteries. That's a, we need those when we make batteries. Yes, absolutely. That's tell them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So as you saw from the videos, galvanic cells are the principle behind batteries. So yeah. suppose we wanted to make a galvanic cell using these species. Um, well, uh, we'd want to know uh, exactly what was being uh, used up in that reaction. So if, you want to make, if you're making a cell, you want to know exactly what reaction is happening. So this tells us what reaction is happening. Um, for example, as I might have mentioned in the other video series, um, batteries eventually run down right. when they run out of starting materials. And you'd like to know how quickly they're going to run down. Well, notice that in this case, we're using up the iron five times as fast as this manganese compound. That might be interesting if you want to know when the battery is going to run down. That wasn't apparent from this equation, right? right this yeah. equation makes it seem like you're using up the iron at the same rate as the manganese. But in fact, you're using it up at five times, at five times the rate. So that would be one indication. Uh, so one thing that's interesting is uh, for when you're thinking about how quickly the battery is going to be running down, um, uh, you're using up the protons even faster, so which wasn't apparent at all from this reaction. Yeah, so you would basically be starting with that first equation because you would know what was going into your cell, but then to balance it, then you want to figure out what's being used up quicker or how much right. of each thing has to be there. That's right. You would know what species you're using, but you wouldn't know how fast you're using them up until you right. put in the coefficients, and you wouldn't know how fast you're using up the protons until you figure or out the coefficients. Even that you're creating water too, right? Because that's right. You figured out that's right. The water might not play too big of a role because right. it doesn't appear in reaction quotients because it's a pure liquid. But it's interesting but the that we're getting the water. could make a difference, right? Pardon? On, like, but like having like the water being made could make a difference depending on like what you're making. Which Depends. Like, could possibly. Possibly. Something yes. Done it's possible. Yeah. In most okay. cases, this won't be the most important factor, but it might be interesting to know that we're producing water here. Yeah. Also, um, remember that when you watch those video series, you saw how you could do things like you could um, figure out what the cell potential is mm -hmm. for this reaction. And then you could use that to figure out the delta G for this yeah. reaction. Um, if you remember this equation, is this yeah. an equation that your instructor, I think your instructor yeah. went over we this, did this today. today. That's right. Mm -hmm. OK, well, um, and why is this practical? Well, this is the energy from the reaction, right? Well, this kind of tells you how much energy you're getting out of the battery, yeah. which is very uh, practical interest, right? Or it, it's usually called, this tells you the maximum amount of work that you can get out of that. But so if you knew the cell potential, you could do this. But do you remember what's N? Um, the it's the number, number of electrons. Which the number of electrons being transferred. What would N be for this case? Five. But we didn't know that until we balanced the half reaction. Yeah. So that's the most important practical use of this. Or anyway, that's the most important practical use from the practical perspective of getting problems right in this class. <laughs> yeah. The way this is most likely to be important to you in problems is um, you don't, N is the number of electrons that are being transferred, but you don't know what that is until you balance the half reactions. Yeah. Um, that's why that's important to you, but that's also important in real life, because in real life you really do need to like to know the maximum amount of work you can get out of a cell, and that comes from knowing N, which comes from balancing the half reactions. So those are a couple, of, so we mentioned a couple of reasons why there's practical importance here. There's practical importance in knowing what these coefficients are to see how quickly we're using things up and, and making things. 
um, as well, and there's practical importance in knowing how many electrons there are. That didn't appear in the overall reaction, though, but that was something we figured out as we went through the half reactions. Notice that when we started, what did we have? We had five electrons here and one electron here. Yeah. You don't know what n is until you have the same number of electrons in both equations. Then they were both five, and then we could plug that in. All right, so that's one very important practical application. Thanks. It makes it easier to understand when you can relate it to something. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good Besides question. Besides just learning how to balance it. I agree. I agree. That it's good that you're trying to. It's good that you're not just trying to learn the technique, but you're, you're asking why it matters. That's yeah. that helps us to remember things that it's important. 